In this video, we'll look at question four from the review for the separating substances unit. This is actually a problem dealing with fractional crystallization, uh, but one that's more quantitative involving some solubility calculations as well. The question says we have a mixture of 25 grams of table salt and 40 grams of sodium nitrate dissolved in a minimum volume of water at 75 degrees. 35, water, 35 mils of water was allowed to evaporate from the solution at 75 degrees. During evaporating, some salt was seen to precipitate. The solution was then filtered. The filtrate was cooled down to zero degrees in an ice bath, and during the cooling, more salt precipitated, and then the cold solution was filtered again. I hope that makes sense to you. You can imagine doing that and even remember doing something similar to that in our lab. Not exactly the same, but something similar. Part A says calculate the minimum volume of water that was needed to dissolve the mixture of the salts. There's more than one way to do this, but let me take each salt and simply calculate what volume of water would be needed to dissolve it. So for example, if we look on our solubility charts at 75 degrees Celsius, we find out that the solubility of sodium nitrate is approximately 141 grams per 100 mils of water. Please verify that by looking it up yourself. Sodium chloride solubility is approximately 38 grams per 100 mils of water. So what I'll do is I'll take the, the uh, mass of sodium chloride that we have. So we have 25 grams of the sodium chloride and I'll use the unit multiplier like we did in our solubility unit. We'll get rid of the grams and replace with mils of water using the solubility 38 grams for every 100 mils of water. We can now calculate the volume of water needed to dissolve it. Okay, I've done that on my calculator and I get 66 mils of water needed for the NaCl, in other words, to dissolve the sodium chloride. Doing the same thing with sodium nitrate, we have 40 grams, the question said, of sodium nitrate. Doing the same thing, but this time using its solubility, which was 141 grams for every 100 mils of water. And again, we set it up like that so that the grams cancel and we're left with mils of water. Let's see how much water was needed to dissolve this salt. Okay, I've calculated it takes 28 mils of water for the sodium nitrate. So how much water do we actually need to dissolve the salt? It takes 66 mils to, to dissolve the mixture, rather. If it takes 66 mils to dissolve the sodium chloride, but only 28 mils to dissolve the sodium nitrate, if we used 66 mils, if we used the larger um, volume of water, wouldn't we then have enough water to dissolve both salts? That's the logic here. So if I use the larger volume of water, definitely the sodium chloride will dissolve because that's what we've calculated was needed. And since we only needed 28 mils to dissolve the sodium nitrate, it would also definitely dissolve in the 66 mils of water. So the answer to part A, what's the minimum volume of water needed? The answer is 66 mils. So let's jump in and do part B. Calculate the mass of each salt that will be collected in the first filtering. So notice, looking back at the question, We've taken 35 mils of water and allowed that to evaporate from the solution. So let's figure out how much water we have left. All right, so we had 66 mils. Let me just change my pen back to black here. So we had 66 mils of water. And we've allowed 35 mils to evaporate. So let's take that away. And what's left is going to be 31 mils of water left. 
Now, originally, both of our salts were dissolved. How much of each salt would still be dissolved in the 31 mils of water? So 31 mils of water. I'm going to do the sodium chloride. It takes 100 mils of water. This is just the solubility again at 75 degrees to dissolve 38 grams. So I get about 11.78. I'll just say 12 grams of, and this was sodium chloride that we're doing. So 12 grams of sodium chloride are still dissolved. That's how much is dissolved in the 31 mils of water that were left. But notice we had 25 grams of sodium chloride in the original mixture. So if we take the 25 grams of sodium chloride that we originally had and subtract the 12 grams that are still dissolved, we get how much has precipitated. So 25 grams was dissolved take away 12 grams which is still dissolved after evaporating the, some of the water and what's left is 13 grams of sodium chloride precipitated. That's precipitated during evaporation and since we filtered the salt this is what ends up in the funnel. This is what ends up being collected after filtering. So the answer to the part B in the terms of sodium chloride, the answer is 13 grams of sodium chloride will, will have been collected. Now how much of the sodium nitrate would have been collected? Well we could do the same calculation or we could just do some logic. We could say since 28 mils of water was needed to dissolve all the sodium uh, nitrate, we calculated that in part A, we still have 31 mils of water, which is more than enough to dissolve all the sodium nitrate. So we could simply say here that all the sodium nitrate is still dissolved. Therefore, no sodium nitrate will precipitate. No sodium nitrate is collected in the first filtering. The only thing collected is the sodium chloride. So we, that was very similar to what we did in our experiment. The salt that precipitated first, the one that we collected in the first uh, filter paper, was supposed to be sodium chloride. Part C, calculate the mass of each salt that would be collected in the second filtering. Well, the second filtering was after cooling down to zero degrees Celsius. So we have 31 mils of water, and we've cooled it down to zero degrees Celsius. Do you see what we're going to do now? We're going to look up the solubilities of each salt at zero degrees Celsius. We'll use the 31 mil volume that we still have, and we're going to figure out how much salt would still be dissolved in that 31 mils. All right, so if you look back at your solubility chart, we can say at zero degrees Celsius, the solubility of sodium chloride is still 36 grams per 100 mils, so slightly less than it was before. And the sodium nitrate has dropped significantly. Um, let me just pause and look that back again. It's 73 grams per 100 mils. Its solubility has dropped a lot. So you remember, just like in our fractional crystallization lab, as we cooled down, because sodium chloride solubility changes very little, essentially no more sodium chloride will precipitate. We'll calculate it here. It's going to be a very small number. However, the sodium nitrate solubility fell significantly. So it is the, going to be the substance which, um, which precipitates during cooling. And so in the second filtering, that's predominantly what we're going to collect, sodium nitrate. But let's take our volume of water that we still have, 31 mils of water. And we're going to do two calculations. First, I'll calculate how many grams of sodium chloride are still dissolved in there. 
So I'll get rid of my volume of water. I'll put in grams of sodium chloride, 36 for every 100 mls of water. Okay, so I calculate 11 grams of sodium chloride still dissolved. And this is at 0 degrees Celsius, right? Do the same thing, 31 mls of water, but this time use the solubility of sodium nitrate. 73 grams of sodium nitrate for every 100 mls of water. And I get 23 grams, 22.6, I'll say 23 grams sodium nitrate still dissolved. Okay, now you can finish off the calculation. If you look back at our earlier result, we said that there were still 12 grams of sodium chloride dissolved at 75 degrees Celsius after evaporating. After cooling, that's dropped to 11 grams still dissolved. So if we take 12 grams minus 11 grams, we can see that one gram, very, very little, but one gram of sodium chloride precipitates and that will be filtered in, in the second filtering. So part C, that's one substance. But remember, we had, looking back at the question, 40 grams of sodium nitrate still dissolved. So if we take 40 grams of sodium nitrate minus the 23 grams, which is still dissolved, we get 17 grams of sodium nitrate, which will precipitate. So think about this. We had... Um, 25 grams of sodium chloride in the original mixture after we dissolved at, 60, at 75 degrees Celsius and evaporated 35 mls of water we found that of that 25 grams 13 grams had precipitated and we collected it and filtered it. Um, a lot the 12 grams were still dissolved in the water we cooled that down to zero degrees Celsius where 11 grams of sodium chloride are still dissolved. So if we take the 12 grams that was dissolved while hot minus 11 grams still dissolved at the cold temperature, we get one gram of sodium chloride that precipitates at the cold temperature at zero degrees. For sodium nitrate, we had um, all 40 grams dissolved at the high temperature and it stayed dissolved at the high temperature even after evaporating. Therefore, we still had 40 grams dissolved, but at the cold temperature only 23 grams of that salt would stay dissolved. So 40 grams was dissolved minus 23 grams that are still dissolved and we get 17 grams of sodium nitrate that would precipitate. So the second filtering we're collecting mostly sodium nitrate. So although it wasn't a perfect separation, we got pure sodium chloride in the first filtering and almost pure sodium nitrate in the second filtering. Part D says if the filtrate from the second filtering was evaporated, so we collect the filtrate, the liquid that comes through the funnel, and we evaporate it, what mass of salt would appear after evaporating? Well, looking at the answer we have still right in front of us here, at zero degrees Celsius, we've said that there's 11 grams of table salt still dissolved in that water, and there's 23 grams of sodium nitrate still dissolved in the water. So if you evaporated the water, you'd get 11 grams of NaCl and 23 grams of NaNO3. So there'd be a total of 34 grams of salt that would be collected. I hope that helps with question 4. Question 10, I think, is very similar to this. You can see we're using solubility as well as reasoning. We're trying to think through the problem and understand what each thing represents. What do the answers mean? We're not trying to just memorize how to do the problem. This is much too complicated to try to memorize. So focus on trying to understand what exactly it is we're, we're doing in each step. I hope the video helps you to do that. If not, feel free to drop by before class or at lunchtime or on Friday you'll be able to ask questions about it as well.